with the head. <laughs> so we're going. We're trying with that one. Is what you're telling me. You're live. Did it just say we're live? Yes, it did. Well, there's probably no one watching. Does anyone care? Does it? Oh, it has the chat thingy on the left hand side. My channel. No, it should be under video manager. Under my video mangler over here. Uh, sure, try that. I'm not positive how that works on your. Seen it. Hey, look, people are jumping in there. Oh, wow. Someone already liked it. Okay. All is working. Thank you very much. Hello there, folks. Got audio good. Audio test one, two, three. If somebody could let me know if the audio is on. That would be great. So what we're looking to do here is talk about arrows. Hey guys, audio is good, Steve. So thank you, Steve. Okay. People will probably wander in. So today's topic is arrows. As we're getting ready for a traditional shoot, I tried to find enough arrows for Slide in here. Come, come on, look. It's wave, leaf. So leaf's growing. He hasn't been shooting that much, but I was looking for arrows, and I thought I might have to make it an emergency order to Lancaster Archery Supply, but I didn't because I found enough of them in various states of array and put enough together for him to be able to shoot this weekend. Disarray. Yeah, they were in disarray, but I arrayed them. <laughs> so. So, it's seven o'clock. I wanted to talk about arrows. As you can see here, I've, I've have, I have, and I've had lots of different types of arrows. The predominant manufacturers are Easton. Um, that that's the predominant one that I like. Gold tip. I've shot some of those. I've made some wooden ones. Um, what else? What else do we have back here for arrows? Uh, oh, I don't know if you can slide it way back in the corner. I have three victory arrows that I bought used in case victory wants to uh, be a sponsor in the knocking point. Just saying. You can't see it. Along that lines is one of the reasons I don't jump to a whole nother manufacturer and I stay with the Eastern Axis and 516 diameter arrows um, is because of standardization. Now, I say that, but Right off the bat, I really like micro diameter arrows. I like the way they fly, even smaller than the 930 seconds. Uh, and one of those is the Bamboo Viper Carbon Pro. Uh, durability, yeah, not so good, but I like the way they fly. This this whole stack, these are, these are arrows that I've wrecked. Of the but uh, the venom venom or viper venom carbon pro bamboo venom. I like these, they fly well, they're not durable. The knocks, eh, replace them with good knocks. Uh, the concept is good, brass, little hand painting. I don't think you can get these anymore, but I'm liking the way these micro diameters fly. So maybe we should start with. How about, what do you guys want to hear? Uh, the most economical that I've found or or the most durable and my favorite? Um, fire up. Whoever comes in first with an answer, I'll start addressing that because I can go all over the place with this, um, with this topic. I could talk a long, long time. How long do you think we should give them to... Answer. So, Leaf, what's your favorite arrow? The ones that shoot well. What well, shoot well for you, Leaf? I shoot uh, jazz. So, for my son, 
and youngsters, I'm really grooving on the uh, the aluminum arrows for a few reasons. You can get them extremely light. Uh, here, let me give you an example. Uh, way back, where are they? Oh, I've got so many things around here. Uh, we have some jazz and some tributes and things like that. Um, you know what I'm looking for is those little silvery ones back there. Could you grab those two piles of arrows back there? So we're There's starting two, with... There are multiple piles of arrows. Two purples. Grab that one. That one. Pretty please. Okay. And there should be some silver ones. So here's an example of the the jazz arrows and the size. You can see they're kind of small. Um, they're light. Well, light to a degree. Um, it, you can get them in very light spines. So this is what keeping leaf and arrows over the years has been an interesting task. These aluminum light arrows are not that durable, just saying. Um, you can see, I even had some platinums in here when you were shooting Olympic style. And as you can see, he keeps growing and growing and growing. And bending arrows, they hit rocks, they bend. Uh, carbon, I'm not a fan of carbon arrows for kids yet. And I haven't found anything that I like a whole lot. These nice light aluminums work great. Light aluminums. Yeah. So, cost and derivative because tend to hit the solid objects near my target. Me too. So, I originally started with wood and went to carbon, and I saved a ton of money by doing that. Uh, the durability. Now, again, I'm staying with a platform. I really really like the Easton Axis. Um, I love the way they fly. I love their durability. Uh, the hits insert. I, I have caught things and ripped the side of them open. So there's been a little, that can cause a little bit of durability. Um, if you, if you already own gold tip and you like the gold tips and you don't mind the big five sixteens, Stay with those. Those are pretty good. Um, they just don't fly as well as these axes. Oh, yeah, throw that light on if you wouldn't mind. Just spin the little dial and face it down on us, and it's a warm light, and you can adjust it, and look, look at that sunlight. So these are my favorite. However, these are not cheap. Um, but they are... Some of the most durable. Now you can do certain tricks. Pardon my looking around. For durability, um, where the where the insert meets the shaft, the sleeving is uh, a good idea. I, I did repair these two, and uh, th that can increase the durability of an arrow a lot. Although when you get solid compression fractures from hitting things square on, arrows tend to break like this towards the back end, believe it or not. It's sliding it, hits, compresses, shock wave comes back through the arrow. I've broken a lot of arrows right in this area. It's kind of interesting. Um, I've also hit steel with Easton Axis, and people probably have done it with GTs. And the knock, the, the, the shockwave just blows the knock out the back. Uh, so, and having a collar on the front and the back can help a lot. But just general durability, the Axis were great. Uh, I'm sure the, I'm sure the GT chads work well. Also, I just. Again, they don't shoot as well for me, so I'm kind of picky like yeah, that. They don't shoot as well for me. So <laughs> I'm getting an echo in the backlog. So that's probably the most durable, best flying arrow that I've found so far. That being said, I haven't got I haven't worked with Victory, Black 
Eagle, BlackRock. I haven't worked with those. Uh, I did. I do have some uh, some uh, victory arrows. You want to grab those three for me, buddy? And I'll show them. I got them on sale. They were in, a, in an arrow bin. And I said, oh, let me grab these. And they were relatively inexpensive. Vic these victory. And uh, they shoot great. Um, but again, I don't have, I just shot them in a, in a, at a bag target in the yard. I haven't taken them out on 3Ds. Uh, because once you start in, if you, if you go with one brand, I think it's great to pick a brand because you want the inserts, the knocks to match. You want the knocks, you, you're going to build your strings to the type of knock, X knocks. Most of my strings are set up for X knocks. Leafs, I don't know what yours are set up for. Whatever size knocks on the Jazz, uh, it's a little thinner. GT treads are a little bigger, I think like 110. They, they have a little wider knock. And uh, so, and one of the reasons I say I like to stay with a platform like the Axis, and I, try, I keep wandering away. I'm going to find a cheaper. I'm going to find a cheaper. I don't. Um, another durable arrow, not as durable as the Axis, but good benefit to cost ratio. I'm not so sure about the cost ratio because I think they're almost as much. But the three rivers, I kind of like these three rivers. I love the way three rivers fletches an arrow. I, I get my axis from three rivers. Um, I've fletched some. I don't know if you want to zip up there to the right. Those are some that I fletch those uh, with the red and white. Then I also have custom made axis right here. Uh, three rivers. This is a pretty standard uh, decent arrow. Another thing, I like wood grain arrows. I like the color of them. I like lighter color arrows. I find that although I got an incredible deal on these shafts, these aviator shafts, my eye doing instinctive aiming doesn't quite pick up the black as much it's just because it's in my peripheral vision uh and uh so i prefer the wood grain look to them even though it's the full wood grain i like the lighter color arrows i like the bamboo color i like the all the different trad um and i'm still doing durability right yeah i think did i answer durability with, with, Wait, with, will you sign into some things? Sign into something? Yeah. Tech support yeah. wants me to sign in. I don't I don't I don't remember it. Is J Crew the right email for that channel? No. Oh. <laughs> Sorry folks. Tech support was hit me up. Um so durability and other people can chime in and, and uh if you've used an arrow that is more or equally durable in its base configuration before you start putting sleeves and things, let some of the other folks know what your experience has been. You can just comment right in there, uh, especially if it's the Victory or the Black Rock, because I don't have experience with those. Ooh, there is a set, a set of arrows. Okay, part of my bag. So you might have seen this. I thought these were going to be my new favorite arrow. Um, these GT Trad uh, with this little sleeve, uh, footed looking shaft. Very heavy arrow. Um, I don't know. I, I've shot it a little bit. Uh, I like the sleeving idea. And I'm sure it's going to be strong. It kind of catches a little on the way in. Maybe I don't have the right size points on. Uh, but uh, these are pretty cool. Heavy, pretty expensive too. Uh, and I would like it if they were a micro diameter. I am not, not sure why, but the micro diameters tend to fly better for me. I, and it could be psychological, but I don't think so. Because I wasn't really... A, fond of the uh 
those venom viper arrows when I first got them. I love the way they look, but you know, I was like, eh. but they fly great. I was shooting them the other day again. They fly great. They're not durable. Those ends just take a beating. That very thin end and the half in out just they want to snap like crazy. Um, so I think if you look at uh, you could look at GT Trad Blends, but for me, I keep going back to the Axis. Um, they don't sponsor me yet. They could. Um, so are there any other questions? I see Victory Vaps. Yeah, I want to try the VAPs. I definitely want to try those, especially in my GLO, thinner, smaller arrow uh, for field style shooting. Uh, the VAP arrows look like a really good um, setup. and with a, um, what are those plasticky fletches called? Uh, but we're coming off of a flipper rest where most of the time I'm shooting off of a shelf and other things and you want to use a, a fletch, a nice fletch. And I prefer the True Flight is my favorite fletching to put on there, if I'm putting it on. Um, I won't mention the other names I've, River Rivers I've tried, but that's the one I prefer. Uh, don't I don't know what Three Rivers uses, and these customs are fine. I think Gary splices these babies all up, and then uh, wire cuts them for this nice decorative effect. So, are there any questions that you won't can tell me about that I can't see from there? Not that I'm seeing. Uh I want your opinion. Do you think Dad should invest in a 720 or 1080p webcam? How often do we? All right. Did, tech, did you hear that request from tech support? 720 or 820 or what, whatever it takes, webcam P thing. Do you, uh, do you bother with an index flash? Do I bother with it? I do index my arrows off of uh yes so this being an index flex or uh, a knock um the the fletch that would be traditionally outward if you're a right-handed shooter outward from the shelf i do mark make my arrows all that way um but i've also found i can shoot them completely inboard and it really doesn't make a difference uh, it's more of an OCD thing for me, but what I would say is what is really important is to make sure, and and so and on some arrows, some bows would actually fly better if it was in towards the shelf. And I, what I do is I take there's usually a little notch right there with it you can feel when you grab your arrow, and you'll know that's the the index. But um, what's really important is where this quill is and how that quill hits either the bottom of your shelf or your side plate. If there's a if the quill catches on it, it can bounce a little bit. I learned that trick from Black Widow. Black Widow has some uh, videos on tuning arrows and you want to make sure that these quills don't hit anything. Um, so I tend to get my arrow index just like that with the, with the fletching vertical so that it passes nicely over the shelf and doesn't bounce on anything. And if you look and you put it in, inboard, it almost... It, it uh, may or may not hit that little quill, depending upon the type of rest you have. So I do it. Is it necessary? Probably not, uh, unless your quill hits the shelf somewhere and bounces. And that is the reason for, where are we? That is one of the reasons why Black Widow recommends cutting the fletching off of an arrow so that you leave the quill on there. And that way, you not only get the benefit of seeing how the bear shaft flies, you get to see if when you're indexed, if you're indexed incorrectly, 
and the, and the the quill hits something and makes the arrow kick one way or another. So that's a good question. Uh, a lot of topics on it. These are my thoughts on it. Um, a lot of bows, I can flip it over and it doesn't make a difference. So I can put them inboard, outboard. Uh, if you're way worried about that, shoot four fletch and make a shorter arrow. So you have about the same amount of fletching, stabilizing and spinning the arrow. And uh, yeah, so that, that about covers all those. What do you think? Do you think they covered all the bits of? Yep. Yep. Uh, Let me know if there was something. Dave Nash wants to know, where do you purchase those <laughs> quivers <laughs> and what are the costs? Which ones? So my favorite quiver is, people keep asking about this. This is my favorite quiver. I've been using this one for five years. It is made by Sue Dwyer of Dwyer Longbows. This one is uh, a custom, custom only, and it's a couple inches longer because I have longer arrows, longer arms, longer draw. This is kind of a standard size, I think. And this one I had made a couple inches longer. Sue Dwyer, Dwyer Longbows, are these two. Ooh, I'm going to mess up his name. Can you hand me that one? Oh, boy, I forgot his name. Gary... I'll try to remember to put it in the description. It just escape me. He makes them for Three Rivers. Gary. No, boy, I just forgot it. Forgot his name. Uh, I'll try to put a link for this one. This is a woodland basket style quiver. This is a nice one, too. Pretty. It just doesn't fit as perfectly as Sue's does. Uh, another one back there we got from a vendor and at a, at a shoot. And those are my two favorite. And we only have two of those, right? Here, grab my pack basket if you would. I have a pack basket. Which maybe. one? Top one. We have four of them. Top one. This one's prettier. So I wish I can't look this up. And little water bottle holders that match. Isn't that great? Here, Sue made this quiver. A uh, quiver. Sue made this basket too. You can see it has a little bit of color in it, and uh, my quivers had a lot of color in them. We're not doing bass. My quivers had a lot of cover color in them. Well, had more color, but they've faded over the years. Why I like this best over leather, over fleece, over all other quivers is this is really light on my back. Uh, when I'm now again, this is just target 3D stuff like that. This is not hunting. Uh, light on my back in the summertime when it rains the water runs through it snow rain right through it, it doesn't fill up i've had other quivers fill up <laughs> rain storms haven't we really. yep so oh and i'm also a proponent of ah, making your own quiver <laughs> it's a little kid's quiver isn't there another kid's quiver back there I don't think hey, so. there's around? a PVC pipe quiver. Yeah. So anyhow, that's quiver. Are there price. any other questions? You never talked about the price. Price? Oh, I don't know. 80 bucks? I can't remember. A lot. Yeah, just go online. Take a look. Uh, Sue Dwyer. Uh, she makes side, uh, side and back. And, uh, oh, I forgot the guy's name. Where's Where the... Axis, um, not the Axis, the Easton. I forgot the guy's name that made these. This one, little side quiver. Um, I'll probably see him this weekend. I'll try to put his name down if he still makes them. Um, are there any other, another specific questions going on? Hachi wants to know why do you don't use four fletchings. <sighs> more work. So Greg likes them because they show up better in video going downrange. Uh, I've built them. I, um, you know, more work. I have used them. I've moved around with a few different styles. I've got my little blunt on there. Yeah, that's mostly it. More work. Three works fine. And uh, 
I like kind of a longer fletch, like five inch. So you'll find standard arrows out there, Three Rivers, whoever, for traditional with a nice long fletch. So that, that, that's a great helical. It's a great combination. That's why they build and sell so many of those because it's a very good combination. Um, don't have anything against four fletch other than if I'm doing, I have to fletch one more fletching. And that's pretty bad. And if I do four fletch, I tend to drop the length down a bit because I'm, I, I don't need as much surface area. It'll help stabilize the arrow quicker. Um, all kinds of good advantages, but I just, yeah, I don't do it. Greg likes them. Oh, you know what? Now that you brought that up, I'm having a new set of arrows made for 2015. Yeah, I'll just stay with the, with the three fletch, I think. Any other particular questions before I get to an important point? Ha. Huh. I, I, didn't, I didn't say what's the point, an important point. So one of the things I do is I buy my arrows. I try to buy them at a standardized length, about 30 and a half inches, because I have a 29 inch draw. And then I don't like cutting it. I'm not gonna buy a carbon cutting saw. I don't like running back and forth. I don't like trimming to tune. So I do point weight tuning. I get it pretty close. Um, I, and then I pull out my points. I try to keep uh, different um, different point weights. Right here, I got 70 to 45. I probably, I go up to 200. Um, if I start getting up to 200, I'm not hunting with it. I'm not going for extreme weight forward. I would start putting a heavier insert in. I would be putting a 50 or 75 grain insert into the uh, into the arrow and then keeping it in a range where I know I can keep changing my points to get it to behave the way I want. But then you also have to figure the mass of the arrow because if you start getting a heavier, heavier arrow, it's nice to balance the arrow to the bow and have approximately 10 grains per pound of draw weight. Good approximation. Um, but you, you don't, if you start get, making a heavier arrow just to get it to fly right, it may be also be heavy and be slower and drop quicker. It's all a little bit of a balancing act. Um, and I keep in my, I keep that set of Three Rivers arrows in my car all the time. And I have, just in case I come across a bow I might want to try, I have a set of 50s, a set of 600, a set of 500s, and a set of points. Can you throw me that box of points? So, and this box of points stays in there with it. 75 to 145 on the 516 arrows. Um, and let's talk about the points. Some people, oh, we'll have to find a, a field. Ooh, where's a regular field point? Can you reach and grab? Well, let's start with what I like best. This is what I like best. PDP, bullet point, easy pull. These I like the best. Sometimes you can't always get them in a <clears throat> in, in the way that you want. I uh, You have to look at, for it. Sometimes you have to go to bullet points. Uh-oh, I dropped my bullet point. Oh, this is the easy pull. Uh, here's a plain old bullet point. So one of the reasons I like these is the mat that I shoot at, the horse stall mat. The arrows don't want to rip right through it when I uh, use this. The, the blunter arrow slows down quicker. I'm shooting bows that are strong enough <laughs> that I don't have to worry about them not going into a target or not going into a 3D animal. Very rarely uh, have I had them come out of a 3D animal. I have. You hit a chest tube or something? I call it a chest tube because when they build them and they have the foam, they'll sometimes have a plastic tube. And if you catch that exactly, the arrow can bounce out. The arrow that I point. So this is this is more of a traditional, really sharp, 
uh, field point. This is more of a what you're used to seeing. These babies will really pierce some stuff too. So if you're having problems with an arrow sticking, these are great to go to because they'll they'll stick in better. But these will start penetrating the horse stall mat, you know, at 45 pound bow, and I I don't want that if I put things at animals out and I miss them. And uh, so that's why I, I, I started going to the bullet points and now the PDP easy pull. I also have played around with these little easy out arrows. I, I'm just starting to play with those and specifically on those arrows that I, um, I put the little sleeve on so that it pushes its way through and if you have any kind of edge, when you pull an arrow out of a bag target or something like that, it could, uh, it'll catch on there. Foam animals, this is fine. Uh, those spider web targets, I hate those spider web targets with the string that all come together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I've had them strip the, the glass off arrows, and uh, I, I'm not a fan of those at all. Um, so those are the, that's the points. Ooh, I won some of these in a little door prize thing. Some top hats. Now these are some fancy points with a little O-ring. Well, these have the little O-ring too to help it from coming out. And, uh, I'll try those. I, I have used stainless steel. I kind of like the pretty stainless steel bulbous ones. I forgot the brand. Uh, I forgot the brand. So you can see I have sets of five sixteenths, nine thirty seconds, um, and I have some other pretty points that I like. Anybody asking any questions that I'm? Um, I like Ray Speckman says. Ray, have you ever hunted with a bow and arrow? Yes, I have. I have, and uh, I've harvested a deer. Uh, with a bow. <laughs> it sounds like they're, they're harvesting. <laughs> no, I killed it. I killed it clean. <laughs> um, yes, I have. Uh, I I used wasp three-bladed points on a Jennings Model T. And it was, oh, I don't know, 1980. Don't know. Somewhere in the early 80s. Um, I've also hunted rifle and shotgun. Um, I just don't have time to Leaf's not really into it. Um, but yeah, uh, now I'd use, uh, definite trad bow and, uh, cut on contact broadheads. So that would be my go-to if, I, if, you know, when I, if I hunt again someday and, uh, yeah. And then of course, like squirrels and bunnies and stuff when I was a kid. Um, squirrels, not so much. I don't think I ever got a squirrel with a bow. They're hard. They're tricky little buggers. They like, they can see an arrow coming. I swear they can. <laughs> so if you, yeah, but then I try to shoot them in the head. So uh, whatever. Try to shoot the fox in the head. Yeah. Um, you try top hat combo points. Oh, top hat. Yep. They're kind of expensive too. One of, you know, the, you look at this array of points I have, and if you get the PDP easy pull, they're not very expensive. Uh, think about what an arrow saw costs. And I, all these points that I have, all of them aren't even a quarter of a, a half an arrow saw. Um, what? Oh, he's laughing at pictures that are popping up. What else? Uh, oh, other kids, wood arrows, kids. Keeping them in the arrows has been, they're pretty good. Um, spent a lot of time working on them. Any other questions? Bear Power Hunter Extreme. Oh, so any of the extreme GT, extreme heavy, I don't need an arrow that heavy. Um, they're going to drop a lot more than I want. Uh, the GT Extreme, Bear Paw Extreme. Again, I'm shooting 3D, and even if I'm shooting whitetail deer, in fact, those in the quiver over there, the 
Axis is what I would use for sure. Um, cause I trust them. I'd use Escalite 135s cause I could match those up to the poundages I'm shooting. Um, you know, if you're hunting rhinoceroses or Cape buffaloes and something, I don't know, then you want those super duper heavy, ridiculous, tough arrow shoot at cinder blocks. I, I don't need that extra amount of weight in my arrows. Um, so, and I don't stump. Stumping's a bad idea. You are going to fix a lot of arrows if you go stumping. You're going to need collars. You're going to need flat points. You're going to have to pry the things. Chris talked me into stumping. That's a dumb idea. Just say. <laughs> well, wandering around in the woods, yeah, I get it. I, I, I understand. I'm looking for rotten stump. And, but, uh, Except for when it looks rotten and when it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else do we have here? Nobody else have I hunted? Top hat. My boy for to shoot squirrels with his first bow. Uh, <laughs> squirrels, they are tough. <laughs> I could pop them in the eye with a 22, but bow, forget it. Oh. Uh, da -da -da, stumping is fun, but you are right. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna fix arrows. So what else? What else do we have? Did I miss any comments? Because I can't quite see as well as my young boy. We've covered the GT tread. Ooh, here, here's a an ad for newer people just starting out, just trying your first arrows. Uh, really got to recommend these Predator twos. They're an inexpensive arrow. They fly great. They have an incredible range of spine. Uh, I stay in the eights and sevens because standardization. I stick my X Nox in the back of them. And uh, the other ones, you might need a different knock. I don't quite know. I don't like those amp knocks. I think I have some. Uh, there's, yeah, I don't like those as much. Um, they do have this very skinny collar. So this this little point, I don't know where the heck I got them. They are not as big as a normal point. And I only have a few of these. But again, that's why I'm going to these fancy, easy outfill points. The perspectives. That the, the neck comes right even with the collar, the neck. The end of the arrow comes right even with the collar. And uh, I bought them specifically for these, and there must be 1764s. So this collar on the sevens and eights must come out to 1764s. So that's, I don't know where I got these. And um, 1764s probably is. 265-ish. I don't know. That's what the point says. And the collar is 265. Or, or the insert. Uh, I don't know what they call the insert on these uh, on these carbon express predator twos. Great arrow. You just starting out, you want some carbon. That's great. It's not gonna be as durable as some of the others. It's pretty durable. Um, but not as durable as the Axis and the um, car, uh, GT Trads. Then you start sleeving things. Although we'll find out, we'll find out if this how how I could then again. You hit something dead on, rocks dead on, and it's not deflecting. They break right about here. They just the shock wave coming back. It's really wild. I've broken lots of them right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you saw the bag of them. I started collecting a bag of them when they break in the rear portion of it because it's it's kind of an interesting phenomena. Uh, Ouchie. Knox, do you use the same string material and numbers? Oh, no, I don't. No, I don't. Um, I use, and it, this is a good reason to build your own strings. 
or standardize with one knock, one manufacturer, one knock, so that your string or strings can be made the right size so they fit your that particular knock. If I jump arrows, I sometimes have to jump strings, so I don't standardize. My kind of standard would be 12 strand D97. Uh, I don't know which serving I use. I try a few different servings. I start making it tight, and I sometimes control about how, I, how tight I serve it. Uh, but no, I, I'm not standardized. Anywhere from, yeah, I think mostly 12s. Although we've been playing with some BCYX, um, and that's kind of an interesting string. But D97 is mostly what I use for my strings. And I think I try for about 105 thousands when I serve the string and get it nice and tight, you know, between 100 and 105, uh, maybe up to 108, 110. Peanut <laughs> get <Gallagher. laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm glad the peanut gallery is having fun back there. <laughs> it's giving me the hatchet. Uh, da -da -da, George, how are we doing? Do you ever measure front of seat? Ah, ah, yes. Do I measure it? Sometimes. And yes, having a high FOC or higher or not extreme is a good idea. You don't want you don't want an error to balance about here. Um, FOC is front of center. Here, you want to figure it out? There it is, right there. You balance the arrow and you figure, and you look at what proportion of the arrow is in front and back. So this has a percentage front of center. So center, front. You don't want back of center. They If it's back of center, they, they fly funny because the weight mass is trying to get in front of the mass in the back. So the more front of center you have, the, the more stable the arrow is. Uh, people talk about inertia. You're trying to punch through things. You want to go with a high FOC. Um, yeah, I don't get too crazy about it. Again, it's all a balancing act. Um, I, I try to keep up. I, I don't do the numbers. I watch how it shoots, and I know. Here, let's grab another arrow that shoots well. These shoot. And this seems like a light point to me, but let's see what the FOC is on this one. It is about there. <laughs> so you can see it's a little bit front of center. I don't have anything extreme. What would be my most extreme? Yeah, I'm not... I don't get too crazy. You wanted a little bit of FOC. Here's another one about there. You can figure the percentages out if you want to. I, I, I tend to be anal and OCD about too many things. I should, I kind of let that one go. Hopefully I answered that question to Scott. Do you ever measure the FOC in arrow? Ray's. I'm happy whenever they fly. Which was Ray? Was Ray said Ray hunting. has another one. Oh, what's the next one? Me again. Have you ever... Oh, uh, wait. Uh, scroll on. Squirrel? Me? Or, oh, scroll. Me again. Have you ever watched Howard Hill's short videos and studied his archery form? No. I have not watched Howard Hill and studied his archery form. It's not a style for me. That style of bow... I really should give it a try sometime, but I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. Um, I'm not. The, I'm not Jeff Cavanaugh. I'm not a great wing shooter, so I'm not. You know, Byron Ferguson. That I, I, just with a shotgun, I'm just like kind of average wing shooter. The bow, I'm less than average as a wing shooter or aerial targets. So that style of shooting, nope, that's not something I've done yet. I might explore it someday. I'm not going to say never now. I like to play with all kinds of bows, but I haven't delved in delved. I think that word I said wrong. I've not 
jumped into the Howard Hill stuff. But uh, I'm sure it's cool and interesting, but uh, I got to watch. I sp I'm spread so thin now. I don't need to try another thing. Any other questions that we missed? Hello from Brazil. Beckman, did how far back Hutchie Knox? We answered Hutchie's Knox. Ray, Joe Archer, hello, Scott Hutchie. Why? Why was? Ah, oh, yeah, LL squirrels. I've been remiss on that. Um, in fact, they should be hanging out up here, but they're not. The LL squirrels. I love those squirrels, uh, the long life squirrel targets. Um, they are just so cool. Leaf and I love to put them around the yard, put them in trees and things like that and shoot them. That is a great target. If you're just starting out 3D, you want to play in your yard, that LL squirrel is so much fun. I like their possessed looking bunny and I really need to buy a possessed looking bunny. Uh, I, I, it's not really a possessed bunny, but, uh, Copeland, what's his name? Not there. Uh, Aaron Copeland. No, he's the, uh, That's a musician. the guy I bought the, that bow from the, uh, Ed Neat? no, know. it's not, a, he had, he did a, a black on black, a, a black background picture of his LL bunny. And it looked like a possessed bunny. <laughs> so I call him the possessed bunny now. Um, so but the bunny and the squirrels, they are great targets. I love those. And yes, we'll have to feature the little bunnies, the little squirrels, and I'll have to buy a bunny this year. Uh, maybe a pig. I don't like pigs, but the little pig looks cute. Tape or glue on your feathers? Aha, uh -huh, both. <laughs> um, I've used both. Uh, with the wood, I started with glue, then went to tape. And now, now, what I use for putting the fletching on is this Gorilla Super Glue that you can get in hardware stores. It has some kind of rubber or plasticizer or something in it that makes it not quite as hard. And so that's what I've gone to when I put it on. When Lee fletches, I make them fletch with tape. Um, have I let you use glue yet? I don't know. So, yeah. Maybe I'll let him use glue as he gets older, but I figured, you know, keep the kids away from toxic stuff. And uh, so, yeah, Cyril, Cyril, CA glue. Cyril on that grill, Nate. I said that wrong, but uh, with some kind of rubberizer or plasticizer or something. I like this a lot. Uh, found out about that from an art archery shop. There was another one. There's a few different types. They have like thinner and thicker and heavier gels. Uh, and that's what I use on uh, my arrows. And I like to put a wrap on. Some people don't like the extra mass of a wrap, uh, especially with black. I really blew it on these. A wrap would have made a huge difference on these. I have some more of these. I should, I'll use wraps like a reflective or a white wrap and some more colorful. This is like Halloween arrows. Uh, so do we have any other questions? They are uh, uh, tape or glue. They are so fun to watch. <laughs> yeah, we got to get a few more little animals. They're just great. You can put around the yard. Uh, I actually have a turkey. Yet. I have a, What's the, what's the name brand manufacturer, Reinhardt? Reinhardt. Yeah. Uh, I have a turkey and a boar that I haven't really shot that much. At all. I got them at a really good price. They were blems and and I was too late to get the deer. Next year, I'm going to stand in line and get a deer if they have a woodland buck on sale. Um, I was talking to somebody and like 20 woodland buck went at Etar. In no time, I turned around. I see a bunch of a line of people with deer over their back. I'm like, no, I gotta go. I ran up, didn't get it. So I got a turkey and a boar. Um, and mainly I got those because I don't like those targets because I don't 
wait, you know where the kill zone is? So I figured I'd get him in practice. So we're digressing and bear paw do a small, yeah, I don't know if I'm the rat, the rats, the marakeets. Yeah, they're kind of cool. Um, I don't know. We'll think about the rat. Red target. Chipmunk. Oh, is there a foam chipmunk? It was laying around somewhere. Did you see it? Oh, we've got it. <laughs> so we got this little dirty target. Uh, we were at a shoot and and somebody said the, the targets, they were they were going to small targets and 3D setters of 3D targets. Everybody's like, big elk, caribou, moose. <laughs> Put a few small targets in. And this one shoot we're at, the target kept getting smaller and smaller. And the group behind us said, by the time we get to target 15, they're going to be shooting field mice. It was like, that's a riot. A field mice target. Jim Oak target. <laughs> no, they're tiny elk and giant field mice. Yeah. <laughs> so... Somebody could, maybe we, oh, there's that guy. Oh, I forgot his name out of Russia who makes those cool little things. Maybe we get him to make chipmunks too. Uh, I want to get one of those targets, some of his targets. Uh, Yuri, or I can't remember his name. I'm tough with names. So, Bear Bowl next year. Yeah, I think I'm going to go back. Oh, yeah. Lancaster, that's a happening. Um... We'll see how well I do learning how to shoot bare bow. I still haven't aimed and I still haven't learned to do the three under and all that bit. But I may just shoot traditional at the bare bow LAS Classic next year. Not sure. Like traditional wood bow. Carbon arrows. Carbon arrows. I'm, I'm not feeling any need to have to go shoot wood arrows. It's just, I just don't see the point. I'm, a, I'm an archer, not a fletcher. Uh, only when I have to fletch. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm definitely thinking about unless I run out of vacation time or money. Um, yeah, LAS Classic again next year. Maybe we'll get some other bear bow or trad shooters, uh, some of my friends to go with me. The whole team. So, and, oh, Light Knox. Do I have any recommendations? Ooh, no, I don't. I don't have any recommendations. I have to break them. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Luminox. I I have a few. I usually forget them. I'm just gonna remember them this year for the the nighttime raccoon shoot, so you can see it. Uh, I I have uh, some of these are. Are reflective, and I've used those in the in the nighttime shoots. And uh, so I don't have a big recommendation. I forgot the color that's the most like yellow or green. Isn't green? Nah, the I, I don't remember. Yellow, green, or pink. One of those is the most colorful. These are white. One of them shows up better. Luminoc nocturnes. I don't. I don't know. I don't have any recommendations. Uh, Somebody else can see what they put in there. Um, are you going any of the bigger events this year? Bigger events are going to be ETAR for me. I'm going to, I'm, I don't think I'm going to make star. There is the Appalachian Bowman's traditional archery rendezvous at the Whittingham Archery Center next weekend. So hope to make that one. That's why I was looking for arrows. Leaf's going to go with me. Um, I'll be there with you, just shooting my new galaxy, Joe Archer, and that would be at Lancaster. I'm assuming you could bring uh, you could bring it to Etar too. The uh, the galaxy. Tim was asking me about that. If it's okay to bring a G2, to... I just shot at my G2 with my friends. Two friends brought G2s to a traditional shoot and. So I shot my G2 that day. Uh, normally I would probably grab, I don't know. Oh, can you spin that? So the leaf, can you spin that for me? So that I can point up at those bows. Uh, so probably would have shot the Omega or the 
by uh oh, where's my viper? It's not there. Where is it? Is it behind me? Oh, up there. Um, another remain there. So, do, do, do. yes, Lancaster Etar this year is Joey Anna. I thought Joey was going. Wait a minute. Is Joey Anna? Can you read that? Galaxy. Oh. Joey. You, oh, Joe Archer 71. Oh. Hi, Joey. I didn't know that was. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Uh, da, da, da. Which Galaxy Joe just bought one. So, arrows, arrows, arrows. Anything else on arrows? I know my wife wanted to have dinner. It's getting to be almost eight. We'll wrap it up at eight unless people hound me for lots of other questions. I could talk arrows and get off on tangents. Uh, so, we've covered Knox. Stay with one vendor if you can, or one size. X is the common one that I use. G is another one. Uh, and um, I can usually make a string that'll fit the Gs and the Xs. And if it's a little thick, it'll also fit the GT tread knocks. Um, points, I point weight tune. I like PDPs, but I also have other um types because of different weights and some of these fancier ones and um fletching i like pretty big helical oh here comes here's another quiver we have little kids arrows they would only stick out about that. Mm -hmm. glad you like the strings uh, 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 I got a Joey string ring. There's a Joey string right here. Bam, ba On my, my, uh, Minuteman. Not Minuteman. Yeah, Minuteman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joey makes strings. For you, for you guys out there. Uh, uh, so. Carbon. Get a decent one. I haven't tried any of the Chinese stuff. Eh, I don't know if I'm going to. Ooh, that's another thing. Well, I don't know. I, I cheap out and buy foreign stuff, but I feel better when I buy things that are built in the United States. Um, so one of the reasons I like the Axis. And I think the GTs were, but now they might be made in Mexico. Not sure. Victory, I think, are made here. What's the other one? Black Rock. I'm forgetting another manufacturer. Send me some arrows so I won't forget you. Other manufacturers. <laughs> 600 spine, 30 and a half inches, 5-inch heel, 4 or 5-inch helical fletch. Left wing. Ah, left wing. Should we get into the whole left wing, right wing debate? Doesn't make any difference once the thing's flying fly downrange, other than, other than, and this is just my opinion, and I'm very opinionated. Coming out of the bow doesn't make any difference. It's whichever hour you can get the most of, of whichever fletching you get the most of. I went with left um, because more colors were available to us in left wing when I bought my jig. Uh, first jig, then the second jig, the bear paw jig, I did the same thing. And that versus right, doesn't make any difference coming off the, until it starts going down range. But it could, if it was spinning this way and the point hits, it can loosen the point a little. That's about the only reason that I have heard or seen evidence of that is even slightly valid, but I can twist it oh, or or I meant to bring this out earlier or or put a little bit of tip jam on there this uh I forgot I think I got this Lancaster uh archery supply 
and uh, you put a little, it's a waxy substance, and you put a little bit of that on your, um, on your arrow, and don't mix it up with your chapstick. I bet it doesn't taste very good, this black waxy stuff. Doesn't smell too bad. Probably it's very similar, but maybe a little thicker. But uh, yeah, I keep saying that. I, I haven't tried it. And I don't think I'm going to do it on on, on a live broadcast. Uh, I didn't look at the ingredients either. When I got this at the LAS Classic, I looked at it. And being a traditional archer, I looked at it and went, is it tip jam? Is it bowstring wax? Or is it chapstick? And uh, as soon as I smelled it, it's coconut. It's chapstick. So... Da -da -da. I use string wax on the thread. String wax. Yep, that would work. Oh, yeah, my string wax is, uh, I don't have any within reach. But, uh, yeah, string wax would work just dandy. Uh, in fact, I wonder, wax is such a wonderful, beeswax is such a wonderful thing. I wonder how, archer, how archers could exist without it. It helps hold the, the strings together. Um, great stuff. Absolutely great stuff. Now they have some new synthetic stuff. You can make up some with a little bit of toilet bowl ring wax, makes it a little stickier. Uh, but uh, yeah, bowstring wax. That's a great idea. Uh, uh, actually, I have one tube of scented string wax. What? Great idea. What? What scent is Hutchie? What scent? Bowstring wax. Beans. Did jewel up or something? To Track the deer, so or I, I don't know. <laughs> hey, Kevin, um, how's it going? I haven't commented on any of your videos in a while. I've been watching your new bow. I like the color raspberryish looking, where it looks raspberryish in the uh, in the video. And uh, twenty-one years. No, twenty-one. It is. Yeah, we, this was impromptu. Didn't know if we would get it done. Um, didn't know if we could log on. I've been talking for an hour. I can talk a lot. I don't know if the content is any good, but you get me talking about archery and I can go on and on and ramble, go off on tangents, chase squirrels, rabbits, you name it. So pine scent. What? Huh. Since the feel of the bowstring wax is called and flavors. Huh. Huh. Yeah, I don't shoot 50 and 60 yards. I can't even see that far, hardly. So <laughs> that's, yep. So uh, Kevin's talking about shooting longer distances. And that's where you know you're starting. You're a good archer. You can start dropping them out there, dropping them in at 50, 60 yards. You know, you've got your act together. You know, I kind of just fake it around the 20-ish to 30-ish yards. I'm really most effective at about 15 to 18, I can usually hit things. But when you start getting, you know, beyond the 30s, yeah, things, psh, my skill level goes downhill. You should start shooting further. You can hit out there. You know you're you're pretty decent. So thanks for the thanks, – thanks, Scott. Uh, I think it's been an hour, and – I don't know who's going to sit and watch this afterwards. Um, I know I would if I was like building strings or working on arrows or something like that. Uh, because you can just listen to the rambling. It's almost like a podcast. Hey, let's talk about the Push podcast. I love the Push podcast. Um, do, do, do. It's a podcast with video. Yeah, this is like a podcast with video. Although we're not nearly, oh, Matt, I mean, he's so professional and explains things so well. I ramble and jump around and, and only semi-coherent. Um, so I think this should wrap it up. Thank you all for at, asking the questions, sitting there and uh, inter, interacting. And uh, we'll do this again sometime with a 1080 564 2P camera or something, whatever he said. I don't know what one of these 1080p 562 cameras. You gonna come say goodbye to everybody, Leaf? They all miss you. Come here, buddy. My buddy, Leaf. Bye. So, bye. Thank you very much from Tech Support. Have a good night. Have fun with your archery.
Yep, it 